All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about a spicy take and something that I ultimately wanted to talk about because I think it doesn't get a lot of representation or a lot of breakdown in the gun culture and on YouTube as a whole. Now, obviously, I'm no specialist with firearms. I don't necessarily train as much as other people on the YouTubes. And I don't, of course, make tons and tons and tons of gun content. However, I wanted to make this video and talk about my experiences realistically EDC firearms and kind of explain my thought process behind why I do and do not do some things. So today I thought we would talk about why I don't run weapon mounted lights or firearm uh, mounted lights for everyday carry. Now I think it's important to note that when I say this I mean specifically for everyday carry because I do think that there is some legitimacy when it comes to things like home defense and carrying or not so much carrying but having a firearm with a weapon mounted light and so I do think it's important to note that my home defense rifle for instance has a weapon mounted light on it however my EDC handgun does not have a weapon mounted light on it. So I thought I would go over why this is and kind of break this down. So first off, let's just talk about the firearm real quick. This is, a, of course, a Springfield Prodigy. This is a double stack 1911 or 2011, as some people like to call them, even though this one is technically a classified as a double stack 1911. I really enjoy it, but this gun, much like many other modern handguns, um, it does have the capacity to have a weapon mounted light and or laser, depending on what you really wanted. And as you can see, I do have a through night TW10 here. I think through night nowadays, it's a lot of garbage or a lot of people like to dunk on these guys. I think it's kind of funny because if you've been into gear as long as myself, you'll know that like companies kind of come and go. And honestly, I don't really think there's anything wrong with Through Night. Through Night used to be for those people, the uninitiated. Um, Through Night was realistically the Olight of the flashlight world long before Olight existed. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some connection between Through Night and Olight, but their practices are very similar. They, their whole objective was to produce reasonably quality stuff for very, very low prices. Of course, made in China, but I'm also not gonna lie, guys, a lot of your stream light, like TLR8s and stuff like that are also made in China. So I hear a lot of people like bash on Through Night as a company and Olight as well. And for me, I, I don't love Olight or Through Night for weapon mounted lights, but not for the reason that you would think. I honestly think that both companies make like perfectly decent lights and this TW10, while not the most powerful or most feature packed weapon mounted light is completely adequate for like 90% of most people. However, the biggest issue that I have with Olight and Through Night is the fact that a lot of, um, there isn't a lot of holster compatibility. So if you were to try to go to say like Safari Land, or if you were to try to go to T-Rex Arms, or if you try to go to pretty much anyone, the probability of them being able to make you outside of like a full custom holster, the probability of them actually being able to make you a um, holster that could bear a TW10 or one of the like Balder, I think it is, Olight rigs, is just not there. And so I think it's kind of unfortunate because a lot of these more budget friendly lights might honestly be how you get your start in like having a handgun. However, like I said, that's not necessarily a possibility. But yeah, so breaking it down, I don't think that Olight or Through Night are necessarily bad. I think the thing that a lot of people hate about both companies is Through Night back in the day and Olight nowadays is really a company focused on like really pushing sales. And so after a while, you know, there's only so many flashlights you want to buy. And so it seems like Olight is almost always like throwing a sale out there and, you know, wanting to and is wanting to move product. And so I don't necessarily fault them, but it's not the best marketing strategy either. So it's already been four minutes and we haven't even really got into the meat and potatoes. Anyways, now let's actually talk about it. So the biggest opposition that I have when it comes to weapon mounted lights and EDC is for the simple fact that I don't love the idea of having a weapon mounted light because essentially when you have a weapon mounted light and i'll just mount this one on here for the sake of demonstration i'll tighten this guy up on here 
When you have a weapon mounted light on your gun, of course, that means that it is attached to your firearm. So that means that realistically, I mean, could you take this off your firearm? You sure could. And obviously, as you can see, I did take it off and put it on with relative ease. However, if you do have to draw your handgun for whatever reason, you're probably not going to separate your handgun and your light. And these two are really designed to work in tandem, as you guys can see, you know, where the finger placement for this light switch is or click switch. It is very much set up for you to pull it out and, of course, use it. And so for that reason, I really hate the fact of having my illumination tied to my destruction. And so what I mean by this is, naturally speaking, anywhere the light source is pointing is subsequently where the end of the barrel or muzzle is. And so that means whatever you're you know, sweeping around checking with your flashlight subsequently also gets muzzled by your firearm. And this is something that I really dislike and why I have my flashlight sitting here. Now, an alternative to having a weapon mounted light, but still obviously getting light, is having an off light source, so having a flashlight. Now, another thing I think that is worth noting before we go into the off weapon lights and why I'm gonna discuss why I like them is kind of starting off on that purpose is in the cold, in the winter in Alaska, is probably one of the times where you're most likely going to need a weapon mounted light, something like a flashlight on your handgun. This is when you're going to like most actually encounter a need for this, right? So one issue that a lot of people don't talk about is at least in the cold, when you fire a firearm, a lot of that smoke is physically a different temperature. So even if so, if you shoot in the dark, you won't see the smoke, but if you illuminate where you're shooting, like say you are firing actively, that whole area gets a huge cloud of smoke. And it's kind of like almost the old timey black powder kind of thing where if there's seriously so much smoke being emanated by you know two or three handgun rounds that you physically cannot see any longer where your target is because your flashlight is flashing right into and illuminating all of that gun smoke. So when you have your light tied directly to your gun. So as you can see, you know, you have your muzzle here, your handgun here, or sorry, your flashlight here. When you shoot, you know, you're directly illuminating your light or your smoke from your gunpowder. And so it does genuinely, whether it's rifles or handguns for that matter, become actually incredibly difficult to see after the first two to three shots. So as an alternative to this, there's a few advantages that having an off-mounted or individual flashlight offers you. First off, of course, it gives you the ability for ultimate output. Any flashlight that you can carry is largely going to be more powerful than a weapon-mounted light. And this is just for the fact that within reason, if you're gonna have any reasonable weapon-mounted light, it's always going to have to tie into the constraints of of honestly mounting to your weapon. And this becomes more poignant with handguns as opposed to rifles. Rifles, of course, having much longer, you know, rail length, so therefore you can get away with a little bit brighter flashlights. But with handguns especially, once again, you're gonna have about two to three inches at most to work with with a flashlight. So you can physically only make so much. In addition to that too, it can realistically only be so thick without protruding and just being obnoxious. So you have to work, especially with handguns, within the confines of the firearm platform that you are using. So you're going to get reduced output as opposed to a flashlight. The other thing, like I mentioned, and conversely, as opposed to your flashlight or your light source being tied to the end of your muzzle. This allows you to freely pivot, access, and check things out. So you can look around, you can peer around corners, you can use your flashlight as a utility object without flashing or without, you know, like muzzling someone with your firearm. And this to me is where I really like and think that a individual flashlight really stands out. Now the last and third thing that I kind of alluded to, and once again, what is directly opposite to a flashlight that's met 
mounted to your weapon is the fact that when you fire, especially in the cold and in the dark, you aren't illuminating the gunpowder that you've just burnt. And so with this, once again, if you are holding it up as you should, you know, around head height to pivot, and if you're holding it off away from your body so you're not silhouetting yourself, you're not like sitting here with a flashlight directly in front. Because the other thing that's worth noting, if you do happen to go up against an armed aggressor, more than likely, if you do use a source of illumination, the person who is armed and aggressive and is aggressive is going to shoot towards your light source. So you don't want to hold this thing, you know, right up here. You don't want to hold it anywhere near your body. However, what you do want to do, and you have to practice this, of course, is hold your flashlight out away from your body, but still at a usable area where you can illuminate things. Now, the other advantage to this, once again, because you're holding this away from your body, is your light source is being casted in a direct and straight line. And so it just so happens to buy bypass your hypothetical handgun. So as you guys can kind of see here, as I point my flashlight, especially when it's off body or away from my body, it is missing my firearm. And so when I shoot, there's gun smoke directly around the end of the barrel that is being emanated by each shot and the flashlight and the light source is not illuminating that. So it's kind of hard to explain and it's a little bit, it sounds a little bit complex, but in practice, if you really do go out and you shoot, and you shoot in the conditions that you would actually defend yourself in, you will tend to find a lot of merit in what I'm saying. And so at the end of the day, do I think a weapon mounted light is a poor or bad choice for self-defense? Once again, I think it's a great choice, especially for home defense. However, when it comes to flashlights or weapon mounted lights in EDC settings, I think that there are far better options like having an off-mounted light and that helps you of course with all of the pros that I just talked about. And lastly, to kind of re-emphasize a point that I had earlier mentioned, the other thing that I like is holster compatibility. There are, honestly, when you start to look at it, when it comes to weapon-mounted flashlight holsters or holsters that will allow you to use your firearm with a weapon mounted light there honestly are not that many especially if you go with something like a you know springfield prodigy there's not a whole lot of holsters out there already for the prodigy and so there's even fewer holsters out there that are light bearing holsters and so when it comes down to it and you look at it systematically if you want a greater ability to carry the handguns that you want to carry or that you practice with or that you would rather carry, this may actually be an unavoidable truth that you can't have a holster that is compatible with either A, the firearm as a whole, as a light bearing, you know, firearm, or B, once again, like I talked about with through night and Olight, there's not a lot of holster options out there. So it basically relegates you to getting either a Streamlight TLR7 or TLR8, or it relegates you to getting a Streamlight 300. And so, uh, or sorry, sorry, Surefire 300. So it basically, you know, pigeonholes you into these two different platforms that if you don't like it, then you're basically just screwed. Now, don't get me wrong, the Streamlight TLR7 and 8 are great weapon mounted lights, and the Surefire 300 is also another great weapon mounted light. However, once again, there are other options out there, and so it really kind of sucks that so many um, Kydex, you know, holster makers only make, you know, holsters for like basically those two major weapon mounted lights. So these are some things to keep in mind when it comes down to looking at weapon mounted lights and whether you choose to EDC one or not. For me, once again, I prefer running an off mounted light. And I think at the end of the day, to be completely honest, if you are, you know, a a citizen that believes in defense, self-defense, and you want to protect yourself, protect your loved ones, at the end of the day, it really comes down to just train because a handgun is called a handgun and not a hands gun for a reason. This gun entirely can be manipulated from the slide release to the magazine release to you know the side itself it can all be entirely used with one singular hand. So that's why it's called a handgun. You can manipulate your safety and do everything you need to do with one hand while your other hand is on a flashlight. So at the end of the day, practice with whatever you know, choice you decide to make, whether you decide to run a weapon mounted light, whether you decide to run an off body light or an off weapon, I should say, not off body, but off weapon mounted light. Um, 
you know, ultimately you're going to have to practice with whatever choice you make. But that is some of the explanation as to why I personally do not tend to run weapon mounted lights on everyday carry handguns. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.